thought to myself, I'd better go and have a look in, under the bench in the shed. So I got on my hands and knees, all in the dust. <laughs> and I was just moving from my hand to get an arm to get under on the floor. And I started one end and I thought to have nothing. And I reached right up the very end, up the corner. I felt something and dragged it out. And it was a film tin. Of course, I didn't know if it was a Titanic film or not. So I brought it out here, I got a knife and ever so rusty and I eat it all the way around with a knife so it took me a long while to get it open but I, I gradually got it open and there was a film inside in perfect condition. After 86 years it had been in that film tin and I took it in the house and I weren't sure then but uh, I, I held a bit up to the, to the light and I could see we are sinking and I could see a ship and I knew it was the Titanic film then and I found it. <laughs> After all those years I found it. We're now going to study these remarkable film sequences in detail. This footage is some of the most important film taken in the Edwardian period. It shows the Titanic at Belfast during the final stages of its fitting out at the Harland and Wolf Yard in the spring of 1912. These shots represent the only moving images ever taken of the liner. Within a few weeks, the ship would be complete, ready for its journey to Southampton and the fateful maiden voyage. Whilst in the fitting out berth, Titanic had some alterations to her promenade deck. This followed experience with the first ship, Olympic, which had ended service the previous summer. These are the actual ice flows the Titanic tried to negotiate on the night of April the 14th, 1912. Stretching some 60 miles long and 12 miles wide, many other vessels in the vicinity that night were stopped in their tracks by these perilous conditions. For some reason, the Titanic ploughed on at over 20 knots until one of these huge bergs appeared at the ship's bow. Some eyewitness reports put these icebergs at between 50 and 200 feet high. It only needed one of them to rip through the hull of the White Star liner. Come quickly, distress, was the emergency message sent from the Titanic by wireless operator Phillips after the collision. This coded radio signal was the forerunner of the SOS, better known today. In fact, Save Our Souls was transmitted by the Titanic that night in a desperate attempt at locating a rescue ship. These desperate calls for help would haunt Captain Smith all the way to his watery grave.